Last time, I gave each character an ability, made some tweaks to the gameplay, and fixed a pretty serious bug. And then I asked all of you what you thought about the idea of adding a timer to the game that would kill the player when the time runs out. And it was almost unanimous with people saying no. Maybe as an optional mode, but no to the timer as a concept. So no timer. There are other ways to cut runs short without actually putting a physical timer in, so I'm probably going to look for some other solution. But this video is about how I'm finally releasing my game, and what I did in the last couple of weeks before release. So I realized that my passion for this project was kind of dwindling. So rather than forcing my way through it, I decided it was time to release the project. Even though I had a giant list of things left to do, but I thought that giving myself a deadline would force me to focus on the things that actually mattered, and drop all of the not really important things on the list. So I have to admit that in my panic, I forgot to record a lot of things, or take notes. So this video was going to be me just trying to remember what I did in the past two weeks. Which isn't great because I have ADHD and we're not known for having good memories. But thankfully I post a lot of things over on Twitter, so I can use that as a cheat sheet. So the first thing that I needed to get into the game was a tutorial. I needed to think about the first time experience when somebody opens the game. How do I teach them how to control and interact with the game without putting text up on screen? Because text tutorials are a terrible way to teach players how to do things. So naturally the first thing I wanted to do was just put text up on screen. I got some keyboard assets from Kenny and used that with some text to show what the controls are on screen. I wanted to put it both on the loading screen and in the pause menu, and those were terrible places to put them. Because the pause menu was already pretty cluttered, and the loading screen is only shown at the beginning of the game. So I borrowed this method from the Binding of Isaac, and put that text on the floor in the first room of each run. So each time you go in for another run, you're reminded of the controls. And the first room doesn't have any enemies, so you get a chance to move around and test them out. But then I had to make it so that the player could get from the overworld, which is where you originally start out, into the game, and how to tell the player those controls before they get into the run. So to fix this, I set it up so that the first time you load the game, you go directly into your first run. You don't spawn in the overworld. But after your first time doing that, you will then from now on spawn in the overworld. And this made the most sense to do anyways because when you first boot up the game, you don't have any points to spend and you're not on the leaderboard yet, so there's nothing you can actually do in the overworld. So it didn't really make any sense to start them there. And then again for the first time experience, I also set it up so that when you die, there are these two exclamation points next to go to base. So you'll go back to the overworld the first time. And those will be there until you finally click on it. So if you want to try again and try again and try again, that's fine. And then when you finally click on go to base, those exclamation points will stop being there. And then when you go to the base for the first time, you'll have exclamation points over the leaderboards. Because I want the games to revolve around those, so out of everything in the overworld, that made the most sense for me to have them go check first because they would do a run, die, come to the overworld, check the leaderboard, and if they're not there, or they're there and their name is lower on the board than they want it to be, they can go again and try to get a better score. And then I tried to make the UI look a little better, because Artman Oil, the pixel artist that I worked with back in the GMTK Jam, they gave me this beautiful menu that I then butchered to put external links into, and a bar so you can put your name in before you begin the game. And they made that for me, but that didn't match anything else in game. So I tried a couple different times making different kinds of UI, using some art bits from that main menu, but nothing I made really felt right to me. It was all just a little strange. And I think it was because of Mixels. The camera in the game is zoomed in twice. So every pixel in the game is two times the size it actually is. But the main menu is three times bigger than it actually is. So between the two, they weren't matching in color or even in the size of the pixels. So I threw that out and ended up making basically the exact same border as before, just with double thick lines instead of a single line. And it does look better, but it doesn't match the menu. And then Artman Oil saw me struggling with this and offered to help out, specifically with the upgrade icons, because honestly, those weren't very good. And the coin was basically just meant to be prototype art. So they spent a weekend and made these really nice pixel art icons that didn't really match everything else, but then we gave them this white outline that makes them fit in surprisingly well with everything else. But that was all of the time that we had for the UI. At this point I was a week away from the deadline and I still had a lot of things to do. 
but something that needed to be fixed was the balance of the game. New players found the game too challenging, and high skill players were able to go on way too long. So I did end up rebalancing the game. I made it so that you take one less damage from the beginning of the game onwards. Which means that if you take a defense or health upgrade, you're able to take three hits from the first boss, instead of the original two. And then as the game goes on, it scales up a little more exponentially, so you can't play the game infinitely because at some point you're going to get one shot. And this made the first time experience feel much better, because originally in the first room, you could die in two hits. So as you're just learning the game, you're getting your butt kicked. And now with this change, in the first four rooms, you're able to take five hits before you die. Which is pretty generous, but it'll scale up quicker for the late game. So you've got that breathing room at the beginning to get used to how the game feels and plays. Then I really wanted to be able to integrate Newgrounds achievements. Because on Newgrounds they've got these API tools that are really useful, but most of these things I get already with GDevelop. Stats and a leaderboard and things like that. But what I can't easily do is set up achievements. So thank you to this wonderful person who made a guide for setting up Newgrounds achievements with my engine. A big thank you. It wasn't nearly as difficult as I thought it was going to be. And then the hard part was trying to come up with some interesting metal ideas. So I sat there for a good 10, 15, 20 minutes just thinking about it, and I ended up just doing the basic ones. So you get an achievement for killing your first 10 enemies, and then your first 100, and then your first 300. You know, really easy achievements to get. And then with that working, the next most important thing to do was marketing. Because we all know that marketing is important. So, I ended up hacking up Artman Oil's main menu screen, and using that for a thumbnail for the game, and then taking some screenshots and getting a GIF, because... GIFs are good. Uh, they communicate things very quickly, they're a form of artistic expression, and they're very mobile-friendly and easily shareable, especially on Twitter. If you haven't seen that talk, you really should, it's really good. And then it was just about filling out the descriptions and realizing that my game might be rated M for Mature. So if anyone asks, um, they're wearing spandex. Pink spandex. Okay? Now we get to the part of the video where I ask for you to do me a favor. Could you subscribe and click that bell? Because I'm about to move on to a new project, and YouTube might not like it as much. So doing that will make sure that you get to see it. And lastly, if you would like to play the game, I've put the link in the description. A huge thank you to my patrons. Because of them, my coffee cup is full. And as always, the links to the places that I hang out are down below, and if you decide to click on one, then I'll see you there.